Welcome back to Interact with Intellect. We are about to start the third part of this course, which is Strategy in Action. In the first part, we discussed about a strategic position analysis. In the second part, we talked about the strategic choices. Now, we are going to discuss what are the implications or what are the things that we need to consider while implementing the strategic choices we have chosen. In this particular chapter, we'll discuss the organizational structures and how they are affected by the organizational choices. Whatever kind of choice you make, whether you decide to go for organic growth, whether you decide to go for diversification, whether you decide to go for acquisition, jaisa bhi method aap choose kare, there is going to be an impact on the organizational structure. And this is what we are going to discuss here. Let us recap some, some of the things that you discussed earlier in your courses. You must have heard of what an organizational structure is. It is basically the formation, the design of the organization and the way people are organized, the way their authorities and responsibilities are assigned. And this particular uh, you know, structure gives us an idea of how the organization is going to perform. Let me share an example with you. Just tarha, mera aur aapka ek body structure hai. Isi tarha, har janwar jo Allah ta'ala ne banaya, it has a body structure. Depending on the kind of things that a particular animal has to do, it has a suitable body structure. The kind of body structure that a cat has does not match or does not, you know, it is not uh, suitable for a goat. And the kind of body structure a goat has does not suit a fish. So therefore, Allah Ta'ala has given them different structures and they suit for a particular purpose. Isi tarha se, jab hum organizations ki baat karte hain, to organizations ki apna apna structure rakhti hain. Apna apna tariqa hai kaar rakhti hain, jaise wo designed hain. Baad organizations bhoat simple hain, jin mein zyada log nahi hain. So therefore, unka structure bhi simple hoga. But there are organizations, large organizations, like Pakistan Army, like Mitsubishi, like Unilever, like Park Suzuki, you know, these are large organizations. And when you talk about large organizations, we need to organize all these people in such a manner that everybody knows exactly what he or she is supposed to do. And who is responsible, who is answerable to him, who is responsible for what, and who is the boss. To answer all these questions, we need to define something which is called organizational structure. Now the question is, is there a linkage between the organizational structure and the organizational strategy? Since we in this particular course, we are more focused on organizational strategies, hamara zyada concentration hoga ki kya organizational strategy ka koi linkage banta hai organizational structure ke saath? The answer is Yes, there is a connection. Connection kya hai? Aayin dekhte hai. Whatever are the strategic objectives of the organization, yani in the longer term, whatever you are trying to achieve has a connection with the organizational structure. Kaise? Agar aap in the long term, let's say aap kehte hai ki ji, innovation is our key. Jitna hum innovative honge, jitni nai products develop karenge, utna humari success ensure hogi. So, then you have independent teams in your organization structure. Mein. And for that, you have to design and organize your, your uh, people in such a manner. In this way, in which environment you are operating in your organization, that will have an impact on your organization structure too. For example, in which the organization chart will be a bank, it will never match with a cement factory ke organization structure. In this way, in fast moving you know, organizations where environmental changes are fast, where multiple products to manage karna mushkil kaam hai, waha pe product based structures zyada suit karenge. Compared to a situation where pe aapki company ek slow moving product ko handle kar rahi hai. Isi tarha se, wo organization jo diverse environments mein operate kar rahi hai. For example, ek multinational organization jo dunia ke 20 mulko mein operate kar rahi ho, uska structure mukhtalif hoga as compared to ek aisi organization jo ek mulk ek shehar ke ek kone mein baith ke operate kar rahi hai so there there is going to be an impact of the diversity that will be there in the organization similarly the future strategy what are you trying to achieve in the future 
वट आर यू ट्राइंग टू यू नो फोकस ऑन फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आपकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन ऑर्गेनिक ग्रोथ पे बिलीव करती है एंड यू फील दैट बाय एक्विजिशन एंड मर्जर्स यू विल बी ग्रोइंग देन यू हैव टू कीप दिस फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी देन यू हैव टू मेंटेन दिस यू नो ऑप्शन विद यू सो दैट जब कभी आप कोई नया बिजनेस एक्वायर करें तो आपके ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर में उसकी जगह मौजूद हो ऐसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बाय द वे यूजली डिविजनलाइजेशन फॉलो करती हैं Technology, as we all know, in fact, especially the information technology, that also plays a, a, an important role in defining your organizational structure. कैसे? बहुत सारे ऐसे काम जो पहले इंसान अपने हाथों से किया करते थे organization में, now they are performed by the computers. So the more the automation, the more the computerization is there, the thinner or the smaller is the organizational chart that you will be having. This does not mean that we are talking about replacing everyone and bringing in computers. What I'm just suggesting is that in certain organizations, computers' का role ज़्यादा है as compared to others. So because of that, काफी organization charts में difference आता है. मैं आपको इसकी एक example देता हूँ. एक standard sugar factory in Pakistan has around thousand to twelve hundred employees working when the season is on. यानी जब चीनी बनाई जा रही होती है, तो हजार से बारह सौ आदमी वहाँ पे काम कर रहे होते हैं एक पूरे चौबीस घंटे में. In a modern plant, when you have automation in place, in 1200 लोगों की जगह आपको total 60 लोगों की जरूरत होती है। क्या organisation chart में कोई फर्क पड़ेगा? यकीनन पड़ेगा। और वजह होगी technology। इसी तरह से the kind of people you have, जिस तरह के लोग आपके पास हैं, उसका भी एक असर होगा। Example देखिए, आपने यकीनन पढ़ रखा होगा about tall and flat organisation structures. Tall structure में you have less number of people reporting to a certain individual. This we also say that your span of control is narrow in a tall structure. Why is it? Because the primary belief is that people require more supervision. They have to sit on their head and sit on their head. Where there are people who are very trained, educated, क्वालिफाइड एक्सपीरियंस ना हो वहां पे आपको टॉल स्ट्रक्चर सूट करेगा और ये डिपेंड कर रहा होगा आपके लोगों के ऊपर इसी तरह से वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जहां पे ज्यादा अच्छे ट्रेन क्वालिफाइड लोग हैं वहां पे टॉल स्ट्रक्चर सूट नहीं करता वहां पे फिर आप वाइड स्ट्रक्चर फ्लैट स्ट्रक्चर की तरफ चले जाते हैं